Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing another three looks, one palette. This time we're using the brand new Sigma Beauty and Angela Bright collaboration. This palette is so pretty. I feel like it's good for beginners, but it's also good if you're a little bit more advanced. You have a good variety of your neutrals and your pops of colors. So here's what it looks like. Really, really pretty. So this is look number one. I definitely wanted to start off with something a little bit more neutral, something simple, something easy to do. Um, and for all of these looks, I am going in and priming with my Fenty Beauty Eye Primer. This primer is one of my favorites because one, it doesn't have any color to it. Two, it dries down nice and tacky and works with any eyeshadow formulation that I've tried, but it really allows those eyeshadows to adhere and be nice and pigmented. For the eyeshadows, we're starting out with the shade Basic. This one is just a little bit darker than my skin tone, and I'm just applying that into the crease using a big fluffy brush, and I just layer that up to get it nice and pigmented. This will just allow everything to blend out nice and smoothly. And once that is kind of to my liking, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of a deeper brown shade. You can see the two kind of side by side. And with a smaller fluffy brush, I'm gonna start putting this on the outer corner of my eye. I'm starting by placing that color and then I'm doing back and forth motions to blend it inwards and also blend it up into my crease. If you have watched any of my videos, then you know that I really like to take my time with these type of steps. I like to start out with a little product and really build up the pigment and take my time with the blending. And I also like to alternate between looking down into my mirror, looking straight ahead into a mirror, or if I'm filming, I'll look straight ahead into the monitor just to kind of see where those eyeshadows are sitting when my eyes are open. Because I want to be able to see them when my eyes are open and I want the colors to kind of follow the same shape as my eyebrow, if that makes any sense. But I just went back in with that first fluffy brush just to kind of blend out everything with no additional product. Next, I'm taking the shade Cold Brew, which is the darker brown, and a more tapered fluffy brush. And this is just going to darken it up even further, as you can see. I'm just placing that on the outer corner of the eye. I'm not really bringing this up into the crease. It's mostly just staying on the lid. But it's just going to create that dimension. And then I'm dipping back into my previous brush with no additional product to, again, further blend it out. You can see I'm looking straight ahead to see where it sits when my eyes are open. But again, take your time with these steps. Next, I'm taking the shade Autumn, which is a stunning, stunning color. I applied it dry and it actually went on beautifully. Um, if you don't want any fallout, you can apply it with your finger or apply it wet. But I'm just packing that all over the lid to the outer thirds, really not overlapping that outer corner, but some of it kind of dusted over anyways, it's fine. Um, next, I'm going in with the shade Bright, which is obviously brighter, and I'm putting that on the very inner third to kind of brighten up that inner corner of the eye. And here's what the eyeshadows are looking like. Very simple, very easy to do. And I love to use the MAC Eye Coal in the shade Costa Rica. This is one of my absolute favorites. So I applied that into my waterline. I applied some lashes. And for the lower lash line, I'm just taking all those shades that I just used. So I'm starting with that lighter brown, buffing it on the lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go in with a pencil brush and that next darkest color. And I'm putting that all the way from inner corner to outer corner, a little bit higher up than the last color. But this is just going to, again, help everything be nice and blended and seamless. And now with that darkest brown shade and a short shader brush, I'm going to put that on the inner half of the lid. This is going to be the closest up to the lash line, just to, again, make it nice and dark at the lash line and on the outer corner. Take your time with this. You want to do more patting motions and then blend it out so you don't fling that dark color everywhere. And then with that fluffy brush with no additional product, I'm just going to buff it out make sure it all looks good. And then I'm putting that bright shade on my inner corner to make it nice and bright. And then I will just apply some mascara on my bottom lashes. And here is look number one completed. All right, so look number two is going to be dipping into more of the pinks and the purples. I love the purple in this palette. I was excited to do this look. So I'm starting out with the shade Bare, which is basically my skin tone. If you don't have a color in the palette that's similar to your skin tone, you can just use a powder. I didn't really want a crease color. I just want to help everything blend out. Next, I'm going in with the shade that I don't know how to pronounce. I'm not even going to pretend. And I'm going to take a tiny little pencil brush, and I'm going to create kind of a curved line on the inner corner of the eye. Kind of hard to explain. You see what I'm doing. Um, it's not really a cut crease. It's kind of just to add a little bit of definition and uniqueness to the look. I've been seeing a lot of people doing this, and it looks really nice. Next, I'm going to dip into the shade Peachy and very, very lightly blend that line out. I still want it to be pretty harsh, so I'm not really blending it out much, but just enough to slightly kind of diffuse it out. So now I'm going to go in with anything that you can find. You can do the tape method. I'm using some random piece of like cardboard, just whatever you want to do to kind of create a sharp line. I'm not really using this to make a perfected line. I'm using this more as a guide that I'll kind of fix later. But with that shade peachy, I'm putting that on the outer corner and blending it up into the crease, as you can see here. And then I'm going to dip into that more pinky shade. 
and I'm gonna use a smaller fluffy brush. I'm gonna do the same exact method. I'm just not going to take it as high up into the crease. Again, this is just gonna allow me to create a shape without having to you know, really take my time and use smaller brushes. It just allows you to do it a lot faster. So now once I remove the cardboard, you can see I kind of have that line, but I'm still kind of tweaking it, but that way I know where to clean up once I have everything finished. So I'm just playing around with, you know, smaller brushes to make sure it's the exact shape that I like and the pigment is there where I want the pigment to be. So I'm going in with a pencil brush to really kind of define the outer corner. And then with a fluffy brush in that peachy shade, I'm just starting to tweak it, bring it up a little bit higher, do a little bit more blending. You'll kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just doing like a lot of back and forth stuff just to kind of get the shape that I like. Same exact method with this. I alternate between looking down and looking straight ahead to kind of see where it's sitting when my eyes are open. Next, I'm gonna go in with the shade 2015. Again, I'm applying all these colors with a dry brush because I don't want it to be like metallic. I just want it to be nice and shimmery. And sometimes when you spray your brush, it kind of makes a foil look, which I didn't want. So I'm just applying that on the lid. You can kind of see that I'm leaving a space blank where that curve kind of is. So I'm doing this more on the lower part of the lid and on the outer corner. And then I'm re-going back in with that more pinky shade to blend out those edges. But then I'm gonna take the shade Champagne Problems. This color is stunning. And this one I actually did apply wet because I want it to be a little bit more foiled. But I'm putting that basically where I did not apply any other shadow. It's just going to create a little bit more dimension. Next, I'm gonna take the blue shade in the palette and with a tiny little brush, I almost didn't do this, but I felt like it needed a little bit more darkness at the lash line. I'm just packing that very, very lightly on that lower lid area on the very, very outer corner. Um, it didn't do as much justice on camera than it did in person, but I feel like it kind of just tied everything together in person. Um, I will say this color is probably the trickiest to work with in the palette as well. So now I'm gonna go in with my Urban Decay 24-7 liner in the shade Alkaline, which is one of my favorites. It's like the exact color as this pinky, you know, burgundy shade that's in the palette. And I'm taking that shade and I'm buffing it on the lower lash line with a pencil brush. And then I'm gonna take the shade Peachy to start to buff that out. And now I'm taking the purple shade and I did apply Fix Plus onto my brush because I already have my concealer on and I wanna kinda of limit the amount of fallout that I have. Um, so I'm just running that all over the lash line and it's gonna be a little bit more foil down there, but I find that it really makes it pop. And with that pencil brush with no additional product, I'm just going to buff out the edges to make sure it's not super harsh under there. And then with the shade Champagne Problems, say that five times fast, uh, that I also sprayed with a damp brush. I applied that on the inner third and then I'm applying a tiny bit of that blue at the lash line on the outer corner, applying Champagne Problems on my inner corner, applied mascara on my lower lashes, and that is look number two completed. All right, so look number three is definitely the most dramatic of the bunch. I absolutely loved the lid shades that I use, like in the center, these were stunning. But I'm starting out with the shade basic and same thing as we did in look number one. You can see my eyes are getting a little bit more red as this goes on, but it's fine. Um, I'm just applying that into my crease with a fluffy brush. And then I'm gonna take the shade Evermore, which is the bright orange. This is a very, very stunning orange and the formula is incredible. It blended and was so pigmented, it's just, a very, very nice orange. I'm just blending that into the crease and just kind of layering it up because I want this to be super pigmented. But you can see I'm using a smaller fluffy brush than that first color we used. That way it doesn't go all over the place. And you know the drill. I'm just looking forward to make sure that's sitting where I want it to be sitting and looking nice and good. I could honestly just throw this color in the crease and be happy with it. So next I'm taking that blue shade and I'm putting that on the very outer corner and the very inner corner. Again, this color is the trickiest to work with, so I would probably apply a base underneath of it or something just to make it blend a little bit easier. These type of colors, not even in this, this palette, like in general, they can be a little bit more patchy, a little bit harder to work with, so just take your time and it'll look good in the end, I promise. Okay, so this look was a lot of back and forth blending. I definitely didn't show the entire blending process, but basically what I did is I took one of my favorite brushes. This is a Sigma E36 brush. It's just a super tiny little fluffy brush, but I applied that color as you saw onto my lid with a packing brush, and then I'm taking this brush to blend it out. 
which as you can see kind of makes the lid shade a little bit more patchy so i'm just doing a back and forth motions of blending packing on blending packing on and so on and so forth um, really take your time with this because these type of colors if you get it too far out or too blended they'll look very muddy and they can kind of make it look like you have a black eye and we don't want that so what I did to kind of combat that a little bit is I took that pinky sort of shade and that same brush and I applied that into the crease um, to prevent the blue and the orange from mixing and getting super muddy. So now you can see that crease color is a little bit more of like a deep purple versus being that sort of muddy color the orange and the blue were making. So this just kind of saved the day a little bit. Um, but I'm just going to keep doing that and blending it, taking my time, looking forward. Um, I also start to extend it out to my temple a little bit, just making sure that I have no products on my brush because I don't want to bring more color out there. I just want to kind of extend what's already there. Now I'm just going in and reapplying that blue shade into the crease. I'm being kind of messy with it because I'm going to, again, further blend this out. So once you've blended your life away and you kind of have the shape that you are looking for, that you prefer, um, I'm going to go in with a makeup wipe and clean up those edges. You definitely don't have to do this if you don't like the look of a sharpened outer corner, but I just find it looks a little bit more structured, a little bit neater. So now I'm going to take my two favorite shades from this palette. This is the shade Fae. So I did apply this damp because I wanted this to really pop. So you can see it's looking a little bit more foiled, a little bit less shimmery. And I'm just packing that basically everywhere we left blank. You can see where that wet brush is overlapping with the blue. It does kind of get patchy, but I just went back in and touched it up. But now I'm taking the shade Hollywood, which is probably my number one in this palette. And with a tiny brush, and again, this is damp, I apply that right in the center. And this just made the prettiest combination between the two colors and just made the look so dimensional and pretty. And here's what that look turned out like without any mascara or anything. So I'm going in with the KBD Tattoo Liner in the shade of Viridian Green, and I put that in my waterline. This matched the kind of lid shades perfectly, so it worked out but I'm just buffing that lightest shade on the lower lash line with a fluffy brush just to help everything blend out. This step I probably would have left out. I applied that orange on the lower lash line using a short shader brush. Because I packed this on so heavily, it made the blue a little bit too patchy. So next time I would probably apply the blue first directly on like my concealer to allow it to like pop or I would have used that primer underneath there, which I did not do. But anyways, I took that shade and I put that on the outer corner and the inner corner. We're doing the exact same process we did on top where it's kind of like a halo eye. I am just using smaller brushes to fit the lower lash line. So for the inner part of the lid, I'm also dampening my brush because I want to limit fallout and I want this to really pop. But again, same process. And then I will just apply mascara on my lower lashes. And then for the inner corner, I'm taking that shade bright just to really brighten up this look. I like to do this with any dark smoky eye looks. It just makes it not so dark and heavy on the eye area. But that is all three looks. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next one.